Hey everyone, Ian here from Able Cine in Burbank, and today we are checking out the new red V Raptor XL. You know, when I was looking at the specs on this camera, you know, it's a 8K VistaVision sensor, multi-format, all that great stuff. But what really caught my attention was the fact that this is a studio purpose built camera and RED has taken advice. They've listened to their DPs. They've listened to camera assistants. And this camera is really the culmination of listening to that feedback and incorporating things that um, we really love to have. You know, we always loved how REDs were a component based camera. I mean, you could build it to make it purpose built for the job you're doing. But but this is a really cool build for studio. So in that light, I have uh, brought it outside under less than ideal conditions because, hey, that's how we work, right? And I have tricked it out with things that I think in a studio build are pretty much the necessities. So what I want to do is we'll do a cutaway and I want to show you how I built this up and we want to talk about some of the feature sets in the camera. All right, so let's talk about powering up the camera before we talk about the other features. First of all, you're gonna notice that I have a power cable plugged into the camera, and that's going to a VCLX block. So that VCLX block is now providing 24 volts into the camera. One of the nice characteristics of this camera is that you have a range of voltages that you can work with. So I could put anything from 19 to uh, 34 volts into this, and here's the thing. I'm gonna be moving over here. I don't wanna have a battery block. I unplug it, I now have an onboard battery. This is a red dual voltage battery, so it's 14 to 28 volts on there. And here's the beauty of that. Having that dual voltage means that now I've got that higher voltage going in, it means that everything is working on board. If you want to use a 12 volt battery on this um, a 12 volt onboard, that's fine. Just remember your aux power outputs are not turned on. Okay, so most cameras, with higher resolution, higher processing power are going to 24 volt anyway. So it's really not an unusual uh, situation to start thinking about using the high voltage onboard batteries. Okay, so for now, I'm gonna keep this plugged in. All right, so notice here, I've got two Teradex plugged into the camera. Why do I have that? Well, that's because I wanna send one signal to a focus puller and I wanna send a signal to the director. And here's where it really gets interesting. I have them as 1920 by 1080 outputs, and I can put a discrete look on each of those SDIs. So on SDI one, I've got uh, a 709 going to the focus puller. And on SDI number two, I have a customized look for the director. So now he has the look, or they have the look that they want, and they can be in the headspace of storytelling. On the side of the camera are power outputs aux 1 and aux 2. These two pin connectors have maximum outputs of 3 amps and 1.5 and amps respectively. They are isolated and fused. At the back top of the camera are two PTAP connectors. These supply 12 volts of power with a maximum of 3 amps. The ports are protected by a sealed cover and they're also protected by a circuit breaker that automatically resets. Everything I want to do on this camera, I can do with a port that's supplied on the camera body, which I find incredibly exciting. I don't have to Velcro DTAP quads on here. It's so awesome. Okay, so let's go through that real quick. So I have one, two for my Teradex, right? Then I have my Preston module, my uh, modules to talk back and forth, my uh, module for the focus motor that I have on the side here. So that's being powered. And then I have my horns for my uh, focus verification, my electronic focus, you could say, or my electronic focus measure. And then I also have an onboard uh, small seven inch monitor. So let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five things I have powered up. And they all work on the camera body and I don't have to Velcro stuff all over the camera body. That's so awesome. Thank you, Red, for doing that. Thank you for listening. And also, last but not least, I was building this and the last thing I was putting on here is a zoom motor, okay? So I got a Microforce motor with my Microforce. I got a Hedane motor with my Microforce. And I was like, oh man, I'm out of ports. I was so close. The dream was almost there. And then I realized I moved up to the front 
Oh man, there's two three pins on the front that are 24 volt and run stop. So I can zoom and I can start and stop the camera through my Microforce control. This is so awesome. This is what camera assistants want. They want lots of input and output on one camera body so they don't have to reinvent the wheel every time they need to add a new accessory. So uh, let's go set up a shot and I'm gonna show you another really interesting feature of this camera. All right, guys, so I've moved the camera into position. I want to talk about two things before we take a shot with the camera. First of all, uh, news about calibrating the camera. This is big news. You should never have to recalibrate under normal operating conditions within the specifications of the temperature ranges that RED has specified. There is also going to be a firmware update to this camera that does a calibration in 30 seconds. That is incredibly meaningful when you go from say an interior air conditioning out to this location, which is freaking hot today. We're probably over hundred degrees right now and the camera is totally fine. Like it's, I built this inside and I'm gonna say 74 degrees, 72 degree air conditioning. We're outside now in the middle of the day and we're in the middle of a heat wave here in Southern California. So it's probably over hundred degrees right now. And if I look at my T and my E, they're both green. We're good to go. So that's awesome. Here's the second thing. We now have electronic NDs built into the camera. So we could engage them through the menu on the camera or you can use your red app to do it from your phone. So this gives us an incredible amount of flexibility. You know, the director gets the shot. I intentionally chose a long zoom, first because it's full frame and it's cool. But second of all, uh, I'm gonna have a director that's indecisive, imagine. And they wanna see different types of depth of focus on this shot. So we're gonna ask Christy to come out here on this really hot day and be amazing as she always is. And we're gonna do a series of shots so keep in mind, I'm going to record the monitor feeds from the Teradex. So you're going to see the uh, discrete SDIs. You're going to see the 709 for the focus puller. And you're also going to see the LUT, which is the creative look for this shot. So we'll do a couple of setups. And all we're going to do is we're going to set exposure on Christie, And then we're going to ND through a couple layers of NDs. So you can see, by the way, because they're electronic NDs, you have this very granular adjustment on your NDs. So you can do like a quarter, you can do a third, or you can do full stops. So you can get, you know, you get in that situation with a director and like, I just want to have it a little soft. You can get that exactly for them. Now you're the hero because you've got that granular adjustment on the NDs. Okay, so let's set up the shot and let's do a couple of takes and see what we get. That wraps up our look at the V Raptor XL from Red Digital Cinema. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.